Hello again. Uh, I'm on video number three for the default processing stream of uh, Homer 2. Uh, as always, I'm starting on the Homer website. It's uh, homer-fnears.org. Uh, you'll find the forum, which you'll find extremely useful, where to download, uh, documentation, and all sorts of goodies. Uh, if I open up my MATLAB here, I actually have Homer running with a sample data set, just to show you what I'm talking about here. This is the default processing stream for Homer. So if you open up Homer without selecting a uh, specific uh, processing stream, uh, this is what you'll find. Uh, I already have a video now of intensity to OD, of uh, the PC filter, and now we're on here motion artifacts. Uh, just as with all the functions, you'll see the name here. These are going to be the names of the, the input variables, and this is going to be where you input the input variables. Uh, the names, and actually I will go to, if you go to the processing stream GUI under tools here, uh, we can find motion artifacts. Uh, this is exactly the comments off the code itself, but it's a little bit more easily read. Uh, if you look down here, these are going to be your inputs. So D will be your data, your data matrix. Uh, FS is the sample frequency. This is your SD structure. Uh, this is what's going to be actually the active uh, listed channels. Uh, these are the T ink man will actually be used as a way to manually prune or take away um, different uh, data points. Uh, the T motion, this will be the um, time range that you're looking at for the significant change. So if you're looking for a motion artifact, it'll be, let's see if I can show you here, something something a, with a significant change over a very short period of time, and the T motion will indicate what period of time. So if, I think, if we pop this back up, it gives you a typical value range. It's uh, 0 0.1 to 0 0.5 seconds. So obviously if you have a, a large change uh, in your data over three seconds, well, it was enough time for that data to change that way uh, without, without it being a motion artifact. Uh, T-mask will be how much you actually would like to remove around the motion artifact. Uh, again, it's going to be in units of seconds, and the typical value range is from 0 0.5 to 1 second. What will happen is wherever you have your motion artifact, let's, let's just say this is our motor motion artifact. If I have it as one second for my T-mask, it will look one second this direction as well as one second this direction, and it will remove that bit of data. Uh, if I go back to the GUI here, you also have STD EV thresh. That stands for Standard Deviation Threshold. Uh, basically, you're taking this uh, number you put in, and it's going to be multiplied by the actual standard deviation of the data over the time interval of uh, what you indicated for T-motion. So if anything uh, has a larger change than that over the same time period, it's going to be indi indicative of a motion artifact, and then it will be removed by this function. Uh, it says here the typical values are 5 to 20. If you don't want to use this, uh, you just put in some absurdly large number and uh, nothing will be over that so then it will not be utilized as a uh, piece of your a uh, piece of the function uh, a similar uh, piece here is the AMP threshold that stands for amplitude threshold it basically is telling you uh, in optical density units um, what uh, amplitude anything over a certain amplitude will be considered a motion artifact. And th this is f seemingly to me fairly interchangeable with the standard deviation threshold or th and the amplitude threshold. So they're seemingly interchangeable. Um, so you could use them together uh, just if you wanted to denote for some reason that you wanted a certain amplitude and a standard deviation as kind of separate uh, parameters. Or if you just wanted one or the other, you could input uh, that ridiculously large number and the one that you didn't want. And again, it says it down here that if you don't want to use amplitude threshold, you just put in a ridiculously large number of over 100. Uh, again, uh, typical value ranges from 0 0.01 to 0 0.3. These are in optical density units, so it's going to be treated on your um, optical density. Uh, the output is going to be the T included. 
or T inc, which will be a vector with uh, all the time points that you have uh, as a binary uh, array with ones if they're included and zeros if they're not included. And this will be basically calculated using if it's a determined to be a motion artifact from the, st the standard deviation or amplitude threshold, it will become a zero. Or if you utilized the, um, up here, there's a T ink man right there. If you utilize that and actually change it manually, it will also become a one or a zero depending on what you changed it. So anyway, I hope this uh, gives you at least a, a, a good enough rundown as to what's going on with that. If I open up the piece here. Again, this is the default um, processing stream, so you may want to use this. Uh, more than likely, you'll change it on your own. But the motion artifact function is probably something you will want to use. Uh, there are other options uh, for the motion artifact um, removal, and those will be found here. And you'll see you have cr uh, correct spline, you have motion correct PCA, motion correct wavelet, motion correct artic artic artifact by channel. And I'll go over those with, with good time, or in good time. But I hope this gives you a, a nice enough rundown to have an idea of how to use that.